Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Live Your Spa Life Show. Spa Life is a lifestyle that accepts that accomplishment and harmony coexist. The spa and spa life stands for seek power always. We have that power within us to be anything that we want to be, and we connect with wonderful people who are living their life on purpose. So I am so thrilled to introduce to you my special guest today, Monica Vaughn. Her most rewarding times in her life have been wrapped around giving. This is where her heart lies. This is through her heart work, love of adventure, and passion for people and travel that she founded Giving Adventures. Monica, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. <laughs> ah, so wonderful to have you here. And I just, I love your bubbling personality and that you just come out in the world just like unapologetically here to just do your thing. What <laughs> is Giving Adventures? Well, you know, I get that question a lot, and uh, it's really a combination of everything that I love. And have you ever heard of volunteerism before? I have, but t tell our people a little bit more about it. Okay, so volunteerism is that combination of volunteering and touring around the location to have a great time and experience the, the, the country and the people, right? So... Years ago, I decided that, well, I moved to Las Vegas to study travel and tourism, and I certainly didn't find what I was looking for. So I had a, a moment where I was like, why did I come here? Why did I do this? And then I was like, well, what if I could do everything that I really enjoy? And then I just put it all together, and that's how Giving Adventures came to be. Uh, and honestly, it wasn't a business. It was just for fun. Uh, and we, you know, we go and we be a part of a project to give. And then we also, you know, tour around and adventure uh, the location. So, so yeah, that's the basic. <laughs> just you know, I, I love that because so many times when people think about stepping into a business, there can be such a seriousness around it. Like, this is my mission I'm doing and this is da, da, da. And, and the fact that you came from like, what do I love to do? Like, what is yeah. fun, right? And that is really, I mean, that's how people actually are on purpose and they're living their life and they're doing the things that they love to do because yeah. they love it. It doesn't feel like work. It's like, I think somebody said that, you know, every morning that you wake up and you jump out of bed and you look at what you get to do, then you're in the right space and that you're doing your work, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, it's, <laughs> it's been quite a journey, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's about connecting to those heartfelt, those emotional, um, you know, things that give you the energy in order to accomplish them. Yes. Right. Yes. So yeah. tell me a little bit about what is it that you connect to that allows you to have that, that energy that you unlock that energy. Mm. Well, so a little, I mean, more about what, I mean, I love, I have this thing about travel and I know a lot of people do. A lot of you that are listening have that bug as well. And there's a kind of routine that we can end up getting into when we travel, right? And for me and my personality, I love to change things up and do something different. And so that's exactly what happens with, you know, being a part of a project. Every location has been different. Every, you know, project has been different. And that's because it's about what they want, about what they need, and what we could do together. Mm. So that sparks the, the energy of excitement. It's like, oh, we're going to get to go do something different and new yeah. and challenging. And we don't know what's going to come along sometimes on these trips. Right. Well, you know what I love about this and how you've incorporated this into like a business model is that I can already hear some of our listeners going like, well, that looks all good and fun for Monica to go do, but I have a business to do. And how does this fit into what I'm doing? And let me tell you, because one of the things we talk about in spa life, is like a creating a life that you love and bringing some of that harmony in. And it's all about the environments that we create. And sometimes mm -hmm. in doing our business, when we're in the same environment, the same office, the same routines, and the things that we like to do, that we sometimes lose a perspective to be innovative, to be able to be creative, to do something different, to really 
you know, bring and infuse that energy that we may need in our business. So when you actually incorporate part of your travel and have a part of give back, because, you know, that also opens up the, the giving energy that we have of giving our work in the world. When we open that up, it takes us out of our environment. We're able to look at things in a completely different perspective. And then when we come back, we're able to serve deeper. We're seeing things from a different perspective and different things are having to happen. In fact, I love the timing on this because uh, my previous guest, in fact, some of the listeners maybe have just heard uh, the conversation and the interview I had with Catherine R. Martin, where her and her husband went away and went to like seven different countries and went on this whole, you know, um, self-care and presencing and connection uh, adventure for a month. And wow. so many people are like, wow, how do you even do that to get out of your life, right? Yes. And so to really incorporate and have a business where you're taking people out of their normal routine to embrace what they may not know, just think about what that brings back into their life and their business. I mean, have you noticed that? Absolutely. You just touched on many things. You could, you could be a spokesperson for me <laughs> because it's truly about you know, shifting your perspective. And as much as I love systems and routine in ways, you've got to change things up in your life in order to pop open that perspective on what's going on for yourself nice. and your business. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, I call it a pattern interrupt. It's something very different and it, I always like predict for sure that people come back with an incredible amount of gratitude and a whole new look on life in general for this planet and for their day-to-day -day life themselves. Right. It's really powerful. Yeah. I love it. I love it so much. And you know, it's funny, you, know, you mentioned about systems and structure because I mean, I help a lot of my clients around that, but I think it's important. And sometimes I get the pushback from, you know, the creatives where they're like, well, I don't want to be contained and that will like stifle me. And, but I really believe that there is a kind of middle ground where these two personalities can come together, where you can actually have structure in with your creativity. And all we're looking to do is put that structure into your calendar. Give yourself a week or 10 days away from your business. In fact, one of the things I routinely do in just looking at, I have people look at their whole uh, year. In fact, I just finished you know, going through a process of looking at 2019 for some people about what is the flow of their life and to actually put in the times that they can take away from their business to have a different perspective. And I like to look at your business as being like four weeks a month so that those weeks that have five weeks, those can be travel weeks, those can be project weeks, those can be creative weeks. And so you're creating the structure in the container, but what you do within that can be outside of the box. So it's a way to have you know, the place, because if we don't actually put it in the calendar, we actually don't decide, then it's one of those, it doesn't happen. It's one of those some days, but just actually just holding kind of, I call the parentheses, if you will, of mm -hmm. something magical is going to happen during this time. Then what happens during the time doesn't matter, but you've created the time and the structure for it to be allowed to happen. Right, right. Absolutely. There's, well, we all have the, those different personalities, right? Where people are definitely on the spectrum of being really structured and then a lot more loose and fancy free, right? Yeah. And we all kind of, you know, glide along this spectrum and then figuring out what really works for us, right? Yeah. So I, I do come from the place of, I put my home base is over here and like footloose and fancy free. <laughs> I have discovered for sure for being, you know, productive and really getting things done that I must put structures and systems into place, which honestly has allowed me to be more free in ways. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there was a couple other things you just said that made me think of other things, but uh, this is. Um, well, I think it's along the lines that structure gives you freedom. Start to, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, there's, you know, I have a, a girlfriend of mine who, you know, really schedules in. She's very, you know, over here on the spectrum, left brain. She schedules in, you know, time to sleep or she schedules in time to have fun. And so it's like, okay, ready? Let's have fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you go, okay, okay, here I am, and then yeah. here I am. <laughs> exactly, exactly. She cracks me up, but it really works for her. And it's yeah. even during our structured time, 
I'm going to suggest to everyone listening that it's also important to stay open during that structured time for things that are unexpected and come into play because that truly, that's just how life works. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. We make plans and then that's not what happens, <laughs> right? Yes. Oh, I love that so much, you know, and you know, this is where it's like, you would talk about being able to consciously create your life, right? About designing it how you want and not necessarily living by default where you just let things happen. So when you are consciously creating that and, and leaving that container open, right? So it's kind of an, an interesting way we, how you're kind of maneuvering through life where you're designing that, but you're also leaving open to possibility. Um, talk to us about how gratitude comes into play for you and how you bring inspiration into your life. Oh, gratitude is... You know, it's something I've been hearing a lot more uh, in the recent years. And to be honest, I first started a gratitude journal, I think it was back in 1997 when Oprah was talking about it. And I'm like, what an amazing tool. And so I've had that as a practice in my life for a long time. Um, and one of the ways that I do it is I, I have dry erase markers. And I highly suggest this to everyone, uh, and it's so fun too, is that I use my dry erase markers in my bathroom. And I'll do a number of things in there on my mirror, is I will write out the things that I'm grateful for, uh, and it will just shift my energy, will shift my focus and my, my beingness. Also, if you give me a call and I don't answer, you're gonna get on my voicemail. I'm gonna ask you what you're grateful for. And what it just shifts energy so much. It's, it's so, um, it's kind of, it's cliche, yeah. right? Uh, and it works, right? So I, I, uh, well, it's part of your environment. I mean, every time you walk past that mirror, every time you yeah. see the reflection of it, you know, it's just, I love that because it is in your space. What's in your space influences how you're being. So it's that uh, reminder. I mean, talk about, you know, cre creating the container. Absolutely. And then, and on a, you know, on a, a simple daily uh, basis, you know, being grateful for the little things. Uh, and then what happens, you know, speaking of giving adventures, is when you are able to go and be in a completely different environment and see how people live in a completely different way, that gratitude expands tremendously when you come back home. Yes. To see how much you have, to just notice the things that you, that you don't notice, like how amazing your car is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a car. Oh my gosh. It has air conditioning. It has, you know, automatic windows, something that simple going out and doing it. You're getting yourself into that pattern interrupt to experience life around this planet. Coming back to your life, your gratitude is going to expand in ways you've never experienced before. Oh, what a great perspective to be able to look at that because, you know, all the minutia, I mean, what do you say? Like first world problems, right? All these things that come yes. up for us on a daily, daily basis to really have that perspective. I mean, we are so abundant in so many different ways that when we actually sit back, the things that may throw us into overwhelm or anxiety, you know, when we take a moment and put it into perspective, you know, it really allows us to make better choices and to look at things in, in a different way. And yeah. I know you, you shared with me about uh, balance being a movement or balance being a moving target. Share yeah. a little bit about that. Y yes. So balance, you know, every day, you know, we, we, we face different obstacles and opportunities, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, it's that balance. It like, it's our tasks, our to do's, our get the opportunities to do, uh, lists, um, are into play and we've got a lot of things that we're responsible for. And then we're also responsible for ourselves and taking care of ourselves, right? Uh, and it, it shifts from day to day. So the way I approach it is that I keep in mind and I want you all to know that this is a practice for myself because my best changes from day to day. And I believe everyone's best changes from day to day. So it's, it's the, the point is, is to be kind to yourself that you're not always going to get everything done. You're not going to always accomplish everything you set out to do on your list. And that is more than okay. Yes. Yes. 
I totally, yeah. I totally get you on this. You know, I'm having it pop up a lot for, you know, there's this sense of obligation. I feel that is kind of in the air right now, especially with a lot of my clients. I don't know if you're seeing this where there's this obligation, like because there's a to-do list that you have to finish it or that there's certain things that are happening with family and friends and that, you know, you get involved in what they're up to. And so there's almost this letting ourselves this permission to not come from a place of obligation. And I know you and I have talked about this, like, what do you get to do, right? And come from that yes. energy and that reframing that really steps us into the life of what we're doing. Because so many times when we're living from obligation and have to and listen, all this, it's like, it's so heavy. And it's such a, mm -hmm. if you step out of that for a moment, sometimes you can actually have the realization that you're not living your own life. Like you don't even know what it is that inspires you or moves you forward because you're so caught up in, you know, the anxiety of what every, all the other expectations. And I really think that, you know, to lose that obligation aspect of it and not from a lack of responsibility, but from a, just an opening, if you will, to step into that. So I think it's so important that you are really putting some awareness to this. Yes. And sometimes I, I, I even for, you know, I forget myself again, it's that practice of keeping it in the forefront of our minds. And again, that perspective of, you know, actually here, I'll tell you a little something that's kind of funny. <laughs> I personally do not enjoy going to the grocery store. I, I just don't enjoy it. <laughs> I'm with you. I don't even go anymore. <laughs> yeah. I just like, ugh. like there's, there's like this kind of like ugh feeling about it. I have to go to the grocery store or I need to go to the grocery store and I have to pick up whatever, whatever. And you know, that perspective of, Whoa. Okay, Monica, think back to when you were in Ghana. What did a, a grocery store market look like? What, where, how far did they have to walk to get there? You know, um, and that sort of thing. And it's like, whoa. And like reminding myself of, of seeing that is really powerful where I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Why do I not? I, I should really enjoy going to the grocery store. Like, wait a second, reframing it. Why I keyword want to go to the grocery store right. because yeah. it's going to make my life a little better. I'm going to have food in my house. I'm going to have the things yeah. that I, that I need on a day-to-day -day basis. And I get to do this. I get to drive in my car and I get to go to this ridiculous grocery store that has everything and more that I could ever want or need. Right. Right. And it's, it's kind of, again, it's those cliche things sometimes that, you know, we get, they get overlooked, right? Like less is more and we are so abundant yet it's about really putting yourself in that place of perspective. So you see it. And so you experience it in a different way. Right. Oh, it's, you know, it's so funny how, you know, th some of the things that we just take for granted and we just have in our everyday experience, we don't really look at, um, I, like you said, again, the perspective. I mean, I've had different times where I've like gone in the grocery store and I've picked up a, a, a piece of fruit, maybe just like an apple or something. And just having kind of just a moment of like, what had to happen for this apple to land in my hand? Right. Like how did that yes. even happen? Right. Yes. And if I had to go home and plant all these trees and figure it all out and why it's just like I would be starving <laughs> right yes. see how much is provided for us mm -hmm. and it's just uh it's such a beautiful perspective to just step outside of our life and all the things that can just throw us off our game and you know we have to get this next thing done and, and all they have to is to just settle into the awareness of like where is this on this spectrum of importance of, you know, is it urgent? Do I need to do it? Does, can I take this off my plate? Is this how I want to experience my life? And I, that's what I love about what you're doing with the giving adventures of really giving people a perspective of having their travel, but then also being able to see how they can give on a different way that, you know, I'm sure that you've had some of the experiences from people coming, how much the, even though they were there giving, how much they actually received as part of that. Can you share a little bit about some of the people who've gone on these adventures with you? Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, <clears throat> it is, well, <laughs> like, where do I begin? Uh, I, I have, you know, experienced myself and also, you know, witnessed, you know, it's the small things. It's actually sometimes the, 
the conversations that someone that they would have never met before that they had, where they saw, uh, you know, this mom that has seven children, wow. single mom, uh, and they, we were there, you know, this was a, a side project that we did and we were there just um, helping her out for the day, um, you know, clear out some of uh, her, her area around her little house, you know, cause they wanted to, you know, plant some food and, and uh, purchase a cow. Uh, and to see these seven kids running around and being so playful that, you know, some of the people that I was with, you know, they just, you know, it was the look on their faces, the, the, the tears that came later when they spoke about it, you know, wow, just spending, a, having a glimpse of what the day-to-day -day life is like for them. Look how happy they are. Mm. Look how much fun they're having. Yes. And again, going back to those cliche sayings, we've all heard that less is more. Amen, sister. <laughs> And it, it doesn't make sense. And at the same time, it completely does. So yes. those, that's what happens on these, these uh, adventures is that those little moments where you get the opportunity to connect with how someone else lives their day-to-day -day life or a story that they share. Maybe right. it's a you kiddo know, just wanting to play and swing around on their arms. Yeah. Right, so right. Cute. That, you know, that resonates so deeply with me. Um, my company gives to an orphanage called uh, Cortisón de Vida. And mm. I go down, we see them, they're in Mexico and, and we've been there. And it is amazing how joyful these children are. And, you know, Hilda, who, you know, runs the place and they've been there, I believe, 20 years at this point. And they've gotten to the point where some of the children have grown up and, and with the donations have gone on to higher education and they come back and help the children. Like they become this family and they are just so joyful and so happy. And it's like, a lot of times you think of like certain circumstances that, uh, you know, they maybe wouldn't feel as joyful, but they don't see at all that, you know, they're lacking in any way. They are fully present in their day and in their joy and their love for each other. And it really just gets us back to that message of the simplicity of really happiness is just a decision. It's a choice. It's how we're being. It's not anything that anybody else is doing outside of ourselves. And for you to actually have these experiences where people get to have that land for themselves personally, and then take that back into their world um, is so huge. And I know that yeah. along these lines that you have um, this free gift around this uh, ultimate travel checklist, please share more about uh. what that is. Well, I have to tell you, I'm going to share something before I tell you about yes. that. And that is, even though I have had the experience of doing these over the years, uh, it, you know, here in the U.S. as well, so far we've been to six countries and we've got a seventh one up on deck in October. We're going to be going to Thailand. Um, that I get caught up in my day-to-day -day life here in the U.S. Not that it's good or bad or right or it's wrong. I get caught up, you know, with, with what's going on and I, and I do lose that perspective and I do lose that gratitude at times. And <laughs> that's where I let myself, you know, be kind to myself that my best will change from day to day again going back to that and that it's important to stay connected to those different perspectives. So that's, I just, I don't feel strongly encouraging anyone who's listening or watching that to, to not beat yourself up in any way and that it's true for all of us to continue to kind of break those patterns and to have those different experiences uh, to keep that positivity, that gratitude and perspective going. Oh, thanks for presidencing that, you know, that whole, uh, you know, idea of, because sometimes it feels like if you slip back, it's like all is lost, but it's just now like, okay, a couple steps back, but then you're continually moving forward and you're in that positive energy and being able to look at that. And, and you know, it's a, it's a human experience that's happening <laughs> that uh, to be forgiving of yourself along that way. So thanks for, for definitely um, landing that point. Yeah. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So definitely, um, tell us about this checklist and what's so special about it. Okay, okay. So this, <laughs> this came out of my experiences of, of traveling where 
it would stress me out sometimes because of my the timing of the trip or whatnot. And I'd be like, ah, you know, packing and like throwing stuff together. <laughs> Go ahead, I can totally see you do this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, threw everything out of my bed, and I'm like, okay, do I have everything? I don't even know. And then perhaps you've had this experience where, like, you're on your way to the airport, and you're like, I didn't bring deodorant. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> something that so In fact, yeah, it, there was a, um, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. Gosh, I just took a super quick trip to California just one day, and I was like, oh, I don't need whatever, whatever. I don't need my travel checklist. I forgot my toothbrush. <laughs> oh, and so I'm like, what am I doing? I, you know, like I have this amazing tool that I put together because of experiences like this. Yep. It's a simple travel checklist. Now it might sound like something you might not need, but perhaps let me, I'm going to share this with you. It's about peace of mind and efficiency. It's a system for you to utilize that will you can pack super fast you will know for sure that you have everything or not and also i have added in did, like i've got my third world country travel checklist for so there's multiple checklists well yes because like if if i'm going to a conference or an event there are certain things i'm going to bring or not bring that I would on a different uh, a different trip, right? So if I'm going to you know one of my on my one of my giving adventures and we're in a third world country, there's definitely things that I'm going to bring that everyone should bring just in case, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're going to you know another amazing country, there you've got stores and shops everywhere. It doesn't matter as much, and you don't have to be as particular. But there are specific things that over the years I've put together, so there I do have a few different lists and for men and for women. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I love this. So our listeners are definitely going to want to uh, grab this ultimate checklist and we will have uh, the link in the show notes and you'll be able to check that out and don't take it for granted. A lot of times these little tools and tips will save you loads of time and you'll be bummed if you're somewhere and you arrive late at night and places are closed, especially in other countries. You don't know what you're going to yep. have available. Those little, you know, creature comforts that we tend to like to have with us. Uh, it's not about bringing a ton of things, but those few key things that you are not going to want to be without and can impact your experience. So yeah. grab this. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely think that is a part of the, the spa life in the sense of creating a way or a lifestyle that gives you peace of mind and ease as you go through your day-to-day -day duties. Yes, absolutely. So great. And so for, you know, those listeners that are just, you know, getting ready to go on a trip or you, you know, you've forgotten something on a trip before, you're definitely <laughs> going to look in the link here and get Monica's ultimate travel checklist for sure. So before I forget, I want to make sure that I ask you, one of the things I love to ask my um, guests is because I believe environment is everything. What we create, I love that you take people outside of their environment, but when you come back into your environment, we have a different experience of how we feel like in our office versus our bedroom or our family room, these different areas that we've created in our life. What is your favorite room in your home and why? Oh, good question. Uh, well, I like them all. <laughs> And over time, what I decided to do is to have my bedroom be the sanctuary. And the reason why I love that is because I don't take any work in there. Um, I only surround myself with things that I love or bring me joy. So like, pretty much like everything I really have in there is all about travel um, you know, little things I've picked up along the way, incredible memories, uh, some great pictures. And it just, for me, feels so good uh, to be in there. And it's a relaxing space. And I even have a meditation corner that I created. I have one of those in my room too. I love that in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. No TV, okay, people? Yep. No. Zero, yeah, TV. <laughs> Yep. So maybe I have more than one. I'm like zero. Just I that I believe that it just really shifts the energy of relaxing in your bedroom as we're constantly bombarded with the screens in front of us. You know whether it's yes. our computers, 
our phones and that energy coming at us, I think to really clear out the space to relax, love yourself yeah. and others <laughs> in yeah. your bedroom. <laughs> Right. Oh my God. I love this because I'm actually training later today about uh, having your hotel room when you travel to be a sanctuary. Mm. And one of the tips I always give people is to carry either a pashmina or, or a fabric, or you can even use a towel in the hotel room to cover the TV and electronics because the energy of that, it really does affect how you sleep and how you feel in the space. It's huge. Oh my gosh. That's so awesome. Because one of my number one tips for women and I'll even say this for guys too, because there, there can be some cool, like, you know, sarong type, like masculine looking ones. Sure. But like, trust me, you're going to use it as like a little towel, maybe, or whatever. You never know what yep. you can use a pashmina uh, for. Yeah. And I bring two everywhere I go. Yeah. Yeah. So like those big sarongs that you get on the beach, you guys yeah. always take one of those with you because you can use it for so many things. It's, I love that. Yeah. And, um, you know what, girlfriend, I love your, your tip because I have not done that before. I have mm -hmm. not put one of those completely over a TV and Riot. I never turn the TV on in a hotel room. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is people get into their habits and they'll walk into there, they'll flip the TV on and it will be mindless. They're not really checking out of their environment, right? They're not being present right. to that. And they can instantly create a sanctuary by just putting that over the TV. And you know, if you're going to watch a movie or you want to do something, you can take it down, but it's so easy just to cover it, you know, and there's just so many little touches that you can do in a hotel room that really create an instant, I call it an instant sanctuary. So yes, it's just yes. perfect. <laughs> Yeah. We can start a movement with hotels, like yeah. put your TVs in cabinets for people, please. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. At least cover them in some way. So right, yeah. Right. Great. I'm going to use that one. Thank yeah, you. Definitely. It's all yours. Perfect. <laughs> So, so good. I love it. So, you know, for our listeners, you may be, you know, popping in here and you're hearing we're having this, you know, spa life conversation about, you know, accomplishment is one aspect of our life, but how are you doing in that in harmony? You know, and Monica is sharing about getting outside of your life and these, these travel adventures and these giving adventures to be able to have, to have different experiences. And um, I also want to give you guys a, a quick little free tool is to go to my life reset quiz. So you can go to liferesetquiz.com. It'll take you two minutes and you'll see like what areas are you succeeding in, whether it's your environment or your mindset or your self-care, what does that look like for you? Because awareness is always the first step. And then you can see instantly you'll get results back where you're doing really well in and where you may need some support. And then that's where you can make these little shifts and these little changes in your environment um, that will allow you to be more on purpose, be who you're doing and who you want to be and have fun, right? This is all about the fun parts with this. And we would love for you guys to, whether this is on YouTube or on Facebook or the different areas where there's the comments, first of all, subscribe to the channel so you can make sure that you get um, all the listenings here. But put in the comments, like what was an aha for you? Even if you've heard something before, but you heard it in a different way, you know, that you are actually going to implement and utilize. We would love to hear about what that is. And we want to connect with you and have you be part of our community. And so if you have any questions of either myself or, or Monica, make sure you tag us so that we are aware of your question. And we will happy to come in and answer them and connect with you and have any questions and just see how it is that we can support you. We come from a place of just wanting to deeply give and um, just know that that is a place for you. So Monica, thank you so much for being on the show and, and sharing just your enthusiasm and bubbleness for life. I loved having you on here. And I know that our listeners are going to want to connect with you in giving adventures. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. And you know, I'm all, we're always learning and growing, right? And I definitely have uh, learned from you today as well, Dan. Thank you. Ah, my pleasure. So wonderful to have you. So listeners, thank you so much for tuning in and taking a part of your day to be here with us. And until we connect again, live your spa life. Bye for now.